some wandering minstrel lie a thing of shreds and patches of ballad songs and snatches and dreamy lullaby and dreamy What might be your business with Yum Yum? I'll tell you. A year ago, I was a member of the Titi Poo Town Band. It was my duty to take the cap round for contributions. Yuck. While discharging this delicate office, I saw Yum Yum. Oh. We loved each other at once, but she was betrothed to your garden Coco, a cheap tailor. I saw that my suit was hopeless. Overwhelmed with despair, I quitted the town, judge of my delights when I heard that Coco had been condemned to death for flirting. I rushed back at once in the hope of finding Yum Yum at liberty to listen to my protestations. It is true that Coco was condemned to death for flirting, but he was reprieved at the last moment and raised to the exalted rank of Lord High Executioner under the following remarkable circumstances. <laughs> A great big part of virtuous men, when he to rule our land began, resolved to try a plan whereby young men might best be steady. So he decreed in words succinct that all who flirted, leered or winked, unless connubially linked, to fall would be beheaded, 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 to fall would be beheaded. I expect that you'll agree that he was right to so decree, and I right to you were right, and all is right and right can be. And you were right to be, and right and all is right and right and right can be, and all is right and right can be. Right and right can be. The decree you'll understand cause great dismay throughout the land for young and old and shy and bold were equally affected. The youth who winked a roving eye or breathed a nun can you will sigh was thereupon condemned to die. He usually objected, 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 he usually objected. And you'll allow, as I expect, that he was right to so object. And I right, and you were right, and everything is quite correct. And you were right, and we are right, and everything is quite, is quite correct. And everything is quite correct. All is quite correct. And so we straight it out on bail, a convict from the county jail, whose head was next on some pretext, condemned to be mown off, and made him head for falling head to neck, to be decapitated, head cannot cut off another's head, until he's cut his own off, his own off, his own off, until he's cut his own off. And we are right, I think, to say, to argue in this kind of way, and I right to do right and all is right and morally and you are right and we are right and all is right and you are right and you are right and we are right and all it is Chip Taylor, Lord High Executioner of Titipu? Why, that's the highest rank a citizen can attain. It is. Our logical Mikado, seeing no moral difference between the dignified judge who condemns a criminal to die and the industrious mechanic who carries out the sentence, has rolled the two officers into one. 
And every judge is now his own executioner. But how good of you, for I see that you're a man of noble rank. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Ha! To <laughs> condescend to tell all this to me, a mere strolling minstrel. You don't mention it. I am, in point of fact, a particularly haughty and exclusive person of pre-Adamite ancestral descent. You will understand this when I tell you that I can trace my ancestry back to a protoplasmal, primordial, atomic globule. <laughs> Consequently, my family pride is something inconceivable. I can't help it. I was born sneering. <laughs> oh, but I struggle hard to overcome this defect. I mortify my pride continually. When all the great officers of state resigned in a body because they were too proud to serve under an ex-tailor, did I not unhesitatingly accept all their posts at once? And the salaries attached to them? You did. It is consequently my degrading duty to serve this upstart as First Lord of the Treasury, Lord Chief Justice, Commander-in-Chief, um, oh, uh, Lord High Admiral, uh, yes, yes, yes. Master of the Buckhounds, um... <laughs> Evening all. First Commissioner for Police, uh, <laughs> and, 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 oh, uh, yes, um, a groom of the back stairs, um, yes, 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 Archbishop of Titipu, and, 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 oh, um, Duke of Edinburgh. <laughs> Queen Mother? <laughs> the Bailiff. <laughs> <laughs> and Lord Mayor, both acting and elect, all rolled into one and at a salary. A Pooh Bar paid for his services, I a salaried minion. Oh, but I do it. It revolts me, but I do it. And it does you credit. No, oh, but I don't stop at that. I go and dine with middle class people on reasonable terms. I dance at cheap suburban parties for a moderate fee. I accept refreshment at any hands, however lowly. I also retail state secrets at a very low figure. <laughs> For instance, any further information about Yum Yum would come under the head of a state secret. <laughs> Another insult, <laughs> and I think a light one. Yum, a man despair, likewise go to. Yum, yum, the fair, you must not do. It will not do, I'm sorry for you. You very imperfect ablutioner. Very day from school, yum yum. We'll have went away and home would come with a beat of drum and a rum tum tum to wed the Lord High Executioner. Then the brass would crash and the trumpets play and they'll cut the dead of their wedding day. She'll and toddle away. Oh! 
now they're packed extremely soon. In a point of fact, this afternoon, a honeymoon with a vet buffoon at seven commences, so you shall go. And the brass will crash, and the trumpets bray, and their cards and cash on their wedding day. She'll toddle away as all of her with the Lord High Executioner. And the brass will crash, and the trumpets play, and the cards will crash on their wedding day. She'll toddle away as all of her with the Lord High Executioner. Have I journeyed for a month or nearly to learn that yum yum whom I love so dearly? This day to Coco is to be united. The fact appears to be as you've recited. But here he comes, equipped as suits his station. He'll give you any further information. jail by a set of curious chances liberated then on bail on the own recognizances wafted by a favoring gale as one tantams is in trances to a height that few can scale saved by long and weary dances surely never had a male under such like circumstances so adventurous a tale which may rank with most romances Taken from the county jail by a set of curious chances. Surely never had a man so adventurous a tale. Gentlemen, I am much touched by this reception. I can only trust that by strict attention to duty, I shall ensure a continuance of those favors which it will ever be my study to dissolve. <coughs> dissolve? No, 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 deserve. <coughs> if I should ever be called upon to act professionally. <laughs> I'm happy to think there will be no difficulty in finding plenty of people whose loss will be a distinct gain to society at large. Excalibur. 
As someday it may happen that a victim must be found. I've got a little list, I've got a little list of society offenders who may well be underground and who never would be missed. They never would be missed. There's the pestilential nuisances who write for autographs, or people who have flabby hands and irritating laughs, hee <laughs> and children who are up and date and floor you with a flat. Or persons who on shaking hands shake hands with you like that. And all the persons who on swallowing tate and tate insist that none of them be missed. That none of them be missed. He's got them on the list. He's got them on the list. And then none of them be missed. They'll come or they'll be missed. There's the musical directors and others of his race. And the lady pianist. <laughs> I got her on the list. All people who eat peppermint and puff it in your face. That none of them be missed. That none of them be missed Then the idiot who praises with enthusiastic tone All centuries but this and every country but his own And the lady from the provinces who dresses like a guy And who doesn't think she dances but she'd rather like to try And that singular anomaly, the local tourist I don't think he'd be missed, I'm sure they'd not be missed He's got her on the list, he's got her on the list And I don't think she'd be missed, I'm sure she'd not be missed there's the man who puts his money in banks, such as TSB. <laughs> That's the Titty Poo Savings Bank. <laughs> the financed industrialist, I've got him on the list. And others whom I read about in the JEP. <clears throat> That's the Japanese Evening Post. <laughs> They'll none of them be missed. They'll none of them be missed. And certain well-known local politicians who prevail, such as Binnington, Shenton, Jeune, and Madame Brook and Stein and Bale. <laughs> Horsful, Rothwell, Carter, Ellis, Layman, a major oh. too. The task of adding deputies I'd rather leave to you, but it doesn't really matter whom you put upon the list. But I don't think they'd be missed. I'm sure. <laughs> you may put them on the list, you may put them on the list, and it doesn't It seems that the festivities for my forthcoming marriage must last a week. I should like to do it handsomely, and I want to consult you uh, <clears throat> as to the amount I ought to spend upon them. Certainly in which of my capacities, as First Lord of the Treasury, Lord Chamberlain, Attorney General, Chancellor of the Exchequer, Privy Purse, or Private Secretary? <laughs> Suppose we say as Private Secretary. Well, speaking as your Private Secretary, I should say that as the city will have to pay for it, don't stint yourself, do it well. Exactly. <laughs> as the city will have to pay for it. <laughs> that is your advice. As Private Secretary. Of course, you will understand that as Chancellor of the Exchequer, I am bound to see that due economy is observed. Oh, but you said just now, don't stint yourself. Do it well. As Private Secretary. Now you say due economy is to be observed. As Chancellor of the Exchequer. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. <laughs> Come over here where the Chancellor can't hear us. <laughs> Now then, um, as my uh, solicitor, how do you advise me to deal with this difficulty? Oh, as your solicitor, I should have no hesitation in saying, chance it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I will. <laughs> if it were not that as Lord Chief Justice, I am bound to see that the law isn't violated. I see. I'm over here where the Lord Chief Justice can't hear us. <laughs> now then, uh... Now then, as, as First Lord of the Treasury. Of course, as First Lord of the Treasury, I could propose a special vote that would cover all expenses. If it were not that as Leader of the Opposition, it would be my duty to resist it tooth and nail. Or, as Paymaster General, I could so uh, cook the accounts that as Lord High Auditor, I should never discover the fraud. <laughs> Oh, but then, as Archbishop of Titipu, it would be my duty to denounce my dishonesty and give myself into my own custody as First Commissioner for Police. That is extremely awkward. Hmm. I don't say that all these distinguished people couldn't be uh, <laughs> squared, but it is right to tell you that they wouldn't be sufficiently degraded in their own estimation 
unless they were insulted with a very considerable bribe. The matter should have my careful consideration. Oh, but my bride and her sister's approach, and any little compliment of your part, such as an abject grovel in a characteristic Japanese attitude, would be esteemed a favor. No money, no grovel. <laughs> their turn. <laughs> oh, ah, uh, yes, well, uh, that was the idea. It seems odd, doesn't it? It's rather peculiar. Oh, I expect it's all right. Must have a beginning, you know. Well, of course, I've no idea about these things, but I've no objection if it's usual. Oh, it's quite usual, I think. Uh, <clears throat> hey, Lord Chamberlain. I have known it done. <laughs> oh, thank oh, goodness, that's over. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Will you present me? Oh, this is oh, a joke. One at a time, if you please. If you please, this is the 
gentleman who used to play so beautifully on the, uh, on the, on the Marine Parade? Yes, I think that was the name of the instrument. <laughs> Sir, I have the misfortune to love you, Walt Yum Yum. Oh, I know I deserve your anger. Anger? Not a bit, my boy. Why, I love her myself. Charming little girl, isn't she? <laughs> Pretty eyes, nice hair. Taking little thing altogether. Very glad to have my opinion backed by a competent authority. Thank you very much. Good day. Take them away. I beg your pardon, but what is this? Customer come to try on? That is a tremendous swell. <laughs> oh, he's alive! Go away, little girls. Can't talk to little girls like you. Go away. Thirstiest. Oh. Bubba, allow me to present you. Uh, these are my three wards. The one in the middle is my bride to be. Well, what do you want me to do to them? Mind, I will not kiss them. <laughs> oh, no. You can't kiss them. A little bow. A mere nothing. No need to mean it, you know. <laughs> mm, it goes against the grain. Uh, they are not young ladies, they are. Young person. <laughs> come, come. Make an effort. There's a good nobleman. Well, I shan't mean it. <clears throat> How to go to girls? How to go to girls? <laughs> oh, my protoplasmal ancestor. That's very good. I see nothing to laugh at. It is very painful to me to have to say, How to go to girls? How to, go to young persons. I am not in the habit of saying, How to go to girls? How to go to girls? To anybody under the rank of a stockbroker. <laughs> Don't laugh at him. He can't help it. He's under treatment for it. <laughs> Never mind them. They don't understand of the delicacy of your position. No, but we know how delicate it is, don't we? I should think we did. How a nobleman of your importance can do it at all is a thing I never can, never shall understand. <laughs> So high, we shall know better by and by. But youth, of course, must have its fling so hard and us so hard and us. And don't in God what's happy spring be hard and us be hard and us if we're inclined to dance and sing tra la 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 la. Show too much respect to for the highly titled few, but nobody does, and why should you? That you that us should have in spring is hard on us, it's hard on us to our prerogative we cling so hard on us, so hard on us. If we decline to dance and sing, tra la 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 you night and day for three weeks in the belief that your guardian Coco was to be beheaded. And now I find that you're about to be married to him this afternoon. Alas, yes. But you do not love him. Alas, no. Rapture. Modified rapture. Modified rapture. But why do you not refuse him? What good would that do? He's my guardian, and he wouldn't let me marry you. I would wait until you were of age. You forget that in Japan, girls do not arrive at years of discretion until they are 50. Two, from 17 to 49, are considered years of indiscretion. Besides, a wandering minstrel who plays a wind instrument outside the tea houses is hardly a fitting husband for the ward of a lord high executioner. But, oh, 
Shall I tell her? Yeah. Yes. She will not betray me. What if it should prove that I am no musician? There! I was certain of it. So happily I heard you say. <laughs> what if it should prove that I am no other than the son of His Majesty the Mikado? The son of the Mikado? But why is your highness disguised? And what has your highness done? And will your highness promise never to do it again? Ah! Some years ago, I had the misfortune to captivate Katy Shah, an elderly lady of my father's court. She misconstrued my customary affability ah! 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 into expressions of affection and claimed me in marriage under my father's law. My father, the Lucius Junius Brutus of his race, ordered me to marry her at once or perish ignominiously on the scaffold. That night, I fled his court. Assuming the disguise of a second trombone, I joined the band in which you found me, when I had the happiness of seeing you. If you please, I think your highness had better not come too near. The laws against flirting are excessively severe. But we are quite alone, and nobody can see us. Well, that doesn't make it right. To flirt is capital. It is capital. And we must obey the law. Oh, just take the law. I wish it would. But it won't. If it's for not for the law, how happy we might be. Happy indeed. If it's for not for the law, we should be sitting side by side like this. Instead of being obliged to sit a half a mile off like that. Gazing into each other's eyes like that. Breathing sighs of unutterable love. Oh. oh! Like that. With our arms round each other's waists. Like that. Yes, if it wasn't for the law. If it wasn't for the law. But it is, of course. We couldn't do anything of the kind. Not for words. Being engaged to Coco, you know. Being engaged to Coco. To talk of blighted, I would say in tender tone, Love to have let us be united, let us be each other so. I would get a reconciliation when he sees a lot to us, and to have my admiration. of all temptation, such a theme I'll not discuss, and no more consideration will I kiss you for. There she goes. Ah, 
Think how entirely my future happiness is wrapped up in that little parcel. Why, it hardly seems worthwhile. Oh, matrimony. <laughs> oh, go oh, now, then what is it? Can't you see I'm soliloquizing? You have interrupted an apostrophe, sir. I am the bearer mm. of a letter from His Majesty the Mikado. A letter from the Mikado? What in the world can he have to say to me? It's in Japanese. <laughs> oh, do take a seat. <laughs> ah, here it is. I knew it would come sooner or later. The Mikado is struck by the fact that no executions have taken place in Titibu for a year and decrees that unless somebody is beheaded within one month, the post of Lord High Executioner shall be abolished and, 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 oh, and the city reduced to the rank of a village. But that will involve us all in irretrievable ruin. Yes, there's no help for it. I shall have to execute somebody at once. The only question is, who shall it be? Well, it seems unkind to say so, but as you're already under sentence of death for flirting, everything seems to point to you. To me? What are you talking about? I can't execute myself. Why not? Why not? Why not? Oh. Because in the first place, self-decapitation is a, an extremely difficult... Oh. Not to say dangerous thing to attempt. And the second, it's suicide. <gasps> and suicide is a capital offence. <laughs> that is so, no doubt. We might reserve that point. True, it could be argued six months hence before the full court. Besides, I don't see how a man can cut off his own head. A man might try. Oh. Even if you only succeeded in cutting it half off, oh. that would be something. It would be taken as an earnest of your desire to comply with the Imperial will. Oh, oh pardon me, but there I am adamant. As a professional headsman, my reputation is at stake. And I can't consent to embargo upon a professional operation unless I see my way to a successful result. Oh. This professional conscientiousness is highly creditable to you. But it places us in a very awkward position. Oh. My good sir, the awkwardness of your position is grace itself, compared with that of a man in the act of cutting off his own head. I'm afraid that unless you can find a substitute... Oh, substitute? Oh, certainly, nothing easier. A poopa, I appoint you Lord High Substitute. Oh, I should be delighted. Such an appointment would realize my fondest dreams. Oh, but no, at any sacrifice, I must set bounds to my insatiable ambition. I am so proud, if I allowed my family pride to be my guide, I'd volunteer to quit this sphere instead of you in a minute or two. But family pride must be denied and set aside and mortified and mortified. My pretty teams with endless schemes, both good and new, for titty poo, for titty poo. But if I flip the benefit that I diffuse, the town would lose. Now every man to aid his clan should plot and plan as best he can. I heard one day a gentleman say, the criminals who are cut in two can hardly feel the fatal steel. And so are slain, are slain without much pain. If this is true, it's jolly for you. Your courage grew to bid us adieu. So proud I if I allowed my family pride to be my guide. I'd be the benefit that I'd if you stood down with me. Now every man to wait his pleasure to plot as best he can. Now every man to wait his pleasure to plot as best he can. And so, although I'm a little bit of a fool, 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 I'm
I'm ready to go. Yet to recollect what disrespect did I neglect to thus effect this aim direct. So I object. And so, although I wish to go and greatly pine to brightly shine and take the line of a hero fine with grief gone dine, I must decline. And go and show good friend and foe how much you dare I'm quite aware. It's your affair, yet I declare I take your share, I don't much care. I must so I object. 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 So I object. So I object. To sit in solemn silence in a dull dog dog in a pestilential prison with a lifelong lock, awaiting the sensation of a short sharp shock from a cheap and chimney chopper on a big black block. To sit in solemn silence in a dull dog dog in a pestilential prison with a lifelong lock, awaiting the sensation of a short sharp shock. From a chimney chimney chopper on a big black block, a dull dog dog, a lifelong lock, a short sharp shock, a big black block. To sit in solemn silence in a pestilential prison and awaiting the sensation from a cheap and chimney chopper on a big black block. myself to be respited at the last moment, simply in order to benefit my native town, now required to die, and that by the hand of a man whom I have loaded with honours. Oh, is this public gratitude? Is this... Don't oh, go away! How dare you! Oh, am I never to be permitted to soliloquise? Oh, go on, don't mind me. Whoop. What are you going to do with that rope? I'm about to terminate an island your existence. Terminate your existence? Oh, nonsense. What for? Because you're going to marry a girl I adore. Oh, nonsense, sir. I will permit it. I am a humane man. And if you attempt anything of the sort, I shall order your instant arrest. Come, sir, desist at once, or I'll summon my guard. Why, that's absurd. If you attempt to raise your arm... I instantly performed the half of dispatch with this dagger. Ah, no, 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 no. Oh, 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 this is horrible. Are you cold-blooded scoundrel? Are you pr admit that you're about to pr commit a crime which is... which is... <laughs> substitute. What's the matter? Is it absolutely certain that you're resolved to die? Absolutely. Uh, will nothing shake your determination? Nothing. Threats, entreaties, prayers, all useless. Oh, my mind is made up. Then, if you really mean what you say, if you're absolutely resolved to die, and if nothing whatever will shake your determination, don't spoil yourself by committing suicide, but be beheaded handsomely at the hands of the public executioner. I don't see how that's what benefits me. You don't. Observe. You'll have a month to live. And you'll live like a fighting cock at my expense. When the great day comes, there'll be a grand public ceremonial. You'll be the central figure. No one will attempt to deprive you of that distinction. There'll be a procession, bands, dead march, bells tolling, the bells, the bells. All the girls in tears. <laughs> yum, yum, distracted. <laughs> then, when it's all over, general rejoicings and a display of fireworks in the evening. Oh, shh! You won't see them, but they'll be there all the same. Do you really think yum, yum would be distracted at my death? Oh, bless you, I'm sure of it. Why? She's the most tender-hearted little creature alive. I should be sorry to cause her pain. Perhaps, after all, if I were to withdraw from Japan and travel in Europe for a couple of years, I might contrive to forget her. Oh, uh, I, I don't think you could forget Yum Yum so easily. And after all, what is more miserable than a love blighted life? True. Life without Yum Yum. Why, it seems absurd. And yet there are a great many people in the world who have to endure it. 
Poor devils, yes. You are quite right not to be of their number. I won't be of their number. Here's no. what we'll do. You let me marry Yum Yum tomorrow, and in a month you may behead me. Oh, no, no, no. I draw the line at Yum Yum. Very well, then. If you can draw the line, so can I. Oh, now, now, wait. Listen, be reasonable. How can I consent to your marrying Yum Yum when I'm to marry myself? My good friend, she'll be a widow in a month. You can marry her then. Well, that's true, of course. I didn't quite see that, but, oh dear, my position here in the next month will be most unpleasant. Most unpleasant. Not half so unpleasant as my position at the end of it. Ah, oh, yes, but, oh, well, so, well, I, I agree. After all, it's only putting off my wedding for a month. But you won't prejudice her against me, will you? You see, I've educated her to be my wife. She's been brought up to regard me as a wise and a good man. Now, I shouldn't like her views on that point disturbed. Trust me, she shall never learn the truth from me. Ready will for her a lot. If I did not adore myself with passion, tender still, with passion, tender still. Oh, yes, he loves himself with passion, tender still. Take her. She's yours. Oh. Not you, Gisele. If wretched heart has passed away, and by the shines of dull and day, but no, the nights may come to soon. With years and years of hope to do, then let's let long the joy of heart with loving song and merry
sometimes I sit and wonder, in my artless Japanese way, why it is that I am so much more attractive than anybody else in the whole world. <laughs> Can this be vanity? No. Nature is lovely and rejoices in her loveliness. I am a child of nature and take after me, mother. <laughs> Bridegrooms would be depressed by this sort of thing. A month? Well, what's a month? These divisions of time are purely arbitrary. Who says 24 hours make a day? There's a popular impression to that effect. Then we'll efface it. You call it second a minute. Each minute an hour, each hour a day, each day a year. At that rate, we have 30 years of married happiness before us. And at that rate, this interview has already lasted four hours and three quarters. <laughs> How time flies when one is thoroughly enjoying oneself. That's the way to look at it. Don't let's be downhearted. There's a silver lining to every cloud. Certainly. Let's, let's be perfectly happy. By all means, let's, let's thoroughly enjoy ourselves. <laughs> Give thee 
greeting with a with a heart of beating. Fickle moments really stay. Fickle moments really stay. What though mortal joys be hollow? Pleasures come if sorrows follow. Though the toxins on their long and We're distressing you. Never mind. I must learn to get used to it. Only, please do it by degrees. <laughs> Begin by putting your arm around her waist. There. Let me get used to that first. <laughs> oh, wouldn't you like to retire? It must pain you to see us so affectionate together. No. I must learn to bear it. Now, oblige me by allowing her head to rest on your shoulder. Like this. <laughs> I'm very much obliged to you. <laughs> now, k -k 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 kiss her. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, it's simple torture. Come, come, bear up. After all, it's only for a month. No, oh, it's no use deluding oneself with false hopes. What, what do, do you mean? mean? My child, my poor child. How can I break it to her? My little bride that was to have been. Was what? to have been? Yes, you never can be mine. I'm so glad. I've just ascertained that by Mikado's law, when a married man is beheaded, his wife is buried alive. <gasps> buried, buried alive? alive. <laughs> buried alive. It's a most unpleasant death. But whom did you get that from? Oh, from Poobah. He's my solicitor. But he may be mistaken. So I thought. So I consulted the Attorney General, the Lord Chief Justice, the Master of the Rolls, and the Lord Chancellor. They're all of the same opinion. Never knew such unanimity on a point of law in my life. But stop a bit. This law has never been put into force. Ah, not yet. You see, flirting is the only crime punishable with decapitation. And married men never flirt. <laughs> 
Married men never flirt. <laughs> That's true. I quite forgot about that. I suppose I may take it that my dream of happiness is at an end. Darling, I don't want to appear selfish. And I love you with all my heart. And I don't suppose I shall ever love anybody else half as much. But when I agreed to marry you, my own, I had no idea, pet, that I should have to be buried alive in a month. Not I. It's the very first I've had of it. It makes a difference, doesn't it? It does make a difference, of course. You see, burial alive, it's such a stuffy death. I call it a beast of a death. You see my difficulty? Yes, and I see my own. If I insist on you carrying out your promise, I doom you to hideous death. If I release you, you marry Coke what's once. Here's a howdy do if I marry you. When your time has come to perish, then the maiden whom you cherish must be slaughtered too. Here's a howdy do. Here's a howdy do. Here's a pretty mess in the month of mess. I must die without a wedding. Let the bitter tears I'm shedding win this by distress. Here's a pretty mess. Here's a pretty mess. <laughs> Here's a state of things. To her life she clings. Matrimonial devotion doesn't seem to suit her notion. Burial it brings. Here's a state of things. Here's a state of things. What a passion that's intense to worship and adore. But the laws of common sense we ought to ignore. If what he says is true, tis death to marry you. Here's a pretty state of things. Here's a pretty how do do. Here's a pretty state of things. A pretty state of things. Here's a how do Here's a how do what he says is true, I cannot, cannot marry you. Here's a pretty, pretty state of things. Here's a pretty, how do you do? Here's a pretty mess in the month of less. I must die without a wedding. Let the bitter tears I'm shedding witness my distress. Here's a pretty mess. Here's a pretty mess. Here's a state of things. A life you think. Matrimonial devotion doesn't seem to suit her notion. Burial it brings. Here's a state of things. Here's a state of things. With the passion that's intense to worship and adore But the laws of common sense we ought to ignore If what he says is true, tis dead to marry you Here's a pretty state of things, here's a pretty how do do Here's a pretty state of things, a pretty state of things Here's a how do do, here's a how do do For if what he says is true, I cannot, cannot marry you Here's a pretty, pretty state of things Here's a pretty how do you do? In the month of less, I must die without a wedding. Let the bitter tears I'm shedding witness my distress. Here's a pretty mess. Here's a pretty mess. Yes, to a life of things. Matrimony of devotion doesn't seem to suit her. Very young and things. Here's a state of things. Here's a state of things. With a passion that's intense to worship and adore, but the laws of common sense we ought to ignore. 
Betsy says it's true. She says that's about you. Here's a pretty state of things. Here's a pretty how to do. Here's a pretty state of things. A pretty state of things. Here's a how to do. Here's a how to do. Oh, I'm going to say it's true. I kind of tell it to you. Here's a pretty, pretty state of things. Fella, I'm sure you are. But you see, I'm quite helpless. <laughs> I quite see that. <laughs> I can't conceive anything more distressing than to have one's marriage broken off at the last moment. But you shan't be disappointed of a wedding. You shall come to mine. <laughs> it's awfully kind of you, but that's impossible. Oh, why so? Today I die. What do you mean? I can't live without Yum Yum. This afternoon, I perform the half of this bath. Oh, no, pardon me. I can't allow that. Why? You're under contract to die by the hand of the public executioner in a month's time. If you kill yourself, what's to become of me? Why? I shall have to be executed in your place. It would certainly seem so. Oh, oh now the Lord Mayor, what is it? The big... The big... The Mikado and his suite are approaching the city and will be here in ten minutes. Oh, Mikado? Oh, he's coming to see if I've carried out his orders. Oh, now look here, you know, this is getting serious. A bargain's a bargain. And you really mustn't frustrate the ends of justice by committing suicide. As a gentleman and a man of honour, you're bound to die ignominiously by the hands of the public executioner. Very well, then. Behead me. What? Now? Certainly. That's one. Uh, chop it off, Coco, chop it off. <laughs> My good sir, I don't go about prepared to execute gentlemen at a moment's notice. Why, I never even killed a blue bottle. But still, as Lord High Executioner. As Lord High Executioner, I'm to be head of in a month. I'm not ready yet. I don't know how it's done. I'm going to take lessons. I mean to begin with a guinea pig. <laughs> and work my way up through the animal kingdom till I come to a, a, a traffic warden. <laughs> and then a, then a rock filer. And then, and then, then a second trombone. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. I've always wanted one of those. <clears throat> Why, you don't suppose, as a humane man, I'd have accepted the post of Lord High Executioner if I hadn't thought the duties were purely nominal? I can't kill you. I can't kill anything. <laughs> I can't kill anybody. <laughs> Come, my poor fellow. We all have unpleasant duties to carry out. After all, what is it? If I don't mind. Ah! 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 Why should you? Remember, sooner or later, it must be done. Must it? I'm not so sure about that. What do you mean? Why should I kill you when making an affidavit that you've been beheaded will do just as well? There are plenty of witnesses. Lord Chief Justice, First Lord of the Admiralty, the Master of the Buckhounds, the Groom of the Backstairs, the Archbishop of Titipu, the Bailiff, no, the Lord Mayor, and the First Commissioner, hee-haw, hee-haw, of the Bureau des Etrangers. That's where are they? <laughs> there they are. They'll all swear to it, won't you? Am I to understand that all of us high officers of state are required to perjure ourselves in order to ensure your safety? Why not? You'll be grossly insulted as usual. <laughs> Will the insult be cash down or at a date? It will be a ready money transaction. Well, it'll be a useful discipline. Very good. Choose your fiction and I'll endorse it. 
<laughs> Family pride. <laughs> How do you like that, me buck? But I tell you, that's life without yum yum. Oh, yum 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 yum, bother yum yum. Here, Commissioner, go and fetch yum yum. Take yum yum and marry yum yum. Only go away and never come back again. Oh, here she is. Yum yum. Are you particularly busy? Not particularly. You've five minutes to spare. Yes. Then go along with this grace, the Archbishop of Titipoo. He'll marry you at once. But you have to be married alone. Now don't ask any questions. Nagy Poo will explain all. Oh, here he is. Here he comes. That's what I'm Not the world. See, here comes the Mercado. No doubt to see if I've carried out his decree. If he finds you alive, I'll have the greatest difficulty in persuading him I've beheaded you. Oh, Ooh, close thing that Here he comes. Second, I'll certainly reckon the true philanthropist. It is my very humane endeavor to make to some extent each evil liver a running river of harmless merriment. My object all sublime, I shall achieve in time to let the punishment fit the crime, the punishment fit the crime, and make his prisoner pet unwillingly represent a source of innocent merriment, of innocent merriment. All prose is 
fire gets in as you chatter and leave ten four. A set to hear sermons for mystical Germans who preach from ten to four. The amateur tenor whose vocal villain is all desire to shirk shall during off hours exhibit his powers to men to sort wax works. The lady who dyes a chemical yellow or stains her grey and puce or pinches her finger is painted with vigor. And permanent walnut juice. The idiot who in railway carriages scribbles on window panes. We only suffer to ride on a buffer in a parliamentary train. <laughs> My object all sublime, I shall achieve in time to let the punishment fit the crime, the punishment fit the crime, and make his prisoner pit unwillingly represent a source of innocent merriment, of innocent merriment. His object all sublime, he will achieve in time to let the punishment fit the crime, the punishment fit the crime, and make his prisoner pit unwillingly represent. A source of innocent merriment, of innocent merriment. The advertising quack who wearies with tales of countless cures. His teeth have been acted, shall all be extracted by 25 amateurs. The music hall singer attends a series of classes and fugues and ops. By bark into woven with spore and Beethoven, a classical Monday pops. The billiard sharp whom anyone catches his doom's extremely hard. He's made to dwell in a dungeonous hell. On a spot that's always bad, and there he plays extravagant matches in fitless finger stalls on a cloth and true with a twisted cue and elliptical billiard balls. <laughs> My object all sublime, I shall achieve in time to let the punishment fit the crime, the punishment fit the crime, and make his prisoner pit unwillingly represent a source of innocent merriment, of innocent merriment. His object all sublime, he will achieve in time to let the punishment fit the crime, the punishment fit the crime. Is that warrior? Bring the chairs on, put them down there. Idiot. Katisha. <laughs> I am honored in being permitted to welcome Your Majesty. I guess the object of Your Majesty's visit, your wishes have been attended to. <laughs> Uh, the execution's taken place. Oh, you've had an execution, have you? Uh, yes. Uh, the coroner has just handed me his certificate. I am the coroner, and this is the certificate of his death. At Titipu, in the presence of the Lord Chancellor, Lord Chief Justice, Attorney General, Secretary of State for the Home Department. Well, that's where he was. Lord Mayor, that groom of the second floor front. And they were all present, Your Majesty. I counted them myself. A very good house. I wish I'd been in time for the performance. A tough fellow he was, too. A man of gigantic strength. His struggles were something terrific. It was really a remarkable scene. <laughs> Describe it. <laughs> The criminal cried as he dropped him down in a state of wild alarm. 
With a frightful, frantic, fearful frown, I bared my big right arm. I seized him by his little pigtail, and on his knees fell he. As he squirmed and struggled and gurgled and gurgled, I drew my snake a snake. My snake a snake. Oh, never shall I forget the cry or the shriek that shrieked he. As I gnashed my teeth, when from its sheath I drew my snake a sneak. He knows it well, he cannot tell what's true around the tales. He always tries to utter lies, and every time he fails. He shivered and shook as he gave the sign for the stroke he didn't deserve. When all of a sudden his eye met mine, and he seemed to praise his love. For he nodded his head and kissed his side, and he whistled and added he. As the saber true cut cleanly through his cervix, That head was dead, for its owner dead was he. It stood on its neck with a smile well bred and bowed three times to me. It was none of your impudent up and nots, but as humble as could be. For it clearly knew the deference due to a man of pedigree. Of pedigree. And it's oh, I vow, this deathly vow was a touching sight to see. Though drunkless yet, it couldn't forget the deference due to me. It's oh, the youth, he speaks the truth, and never he finds it tells. And in his test, it all to this, exactly as he says, exactly, 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 exactly. exactly. This is very interesting, and I should like to have seen it. Uh, but we came about a totally different matter. A year ago, uh, my son, the heir to the throne of Japan, bolted from our imperial court. Oh, indeed. Had he any reason to be dissatisfied with his position? None whatever. On the contrary, I was going to marry him, yet he fled. I am surprised that he should have fled from one so lovely. That's not true. No. <laughs> you hold that I'm not beautiful because my face is plain. But you know nothing. You are still unenlightened. Learn, then, that it is not in the face alone that beauty is to be sought. My face is unattractive. It is. <laughs> but I have a left shoulder blade that is a miracle of loveliness. People come from miles to see it. My right elbow has a fascination few can resist. Well, allow me. It can be viewed on Tuesdays and Fridays, <laughs> on presentation of visiting cards. As for my circulation, it is the largest in the world. Yet he fled. Uh, and he's now masquerading in this town, disguised as a second trombone. A second, second trombone? trombone? Yes. Would it be troubling you too much if I asked you to produce him? He goes by the name of... Uh, Nanky Poo. Nanky Poo. Uh, well, it's quite easy. <laughs> oh, that is, it's, it's, it's rather difficult. In point of fact, he's... Uh, 
He's gone abroad. Gone abroad? His address? He's gone to Wales to see his friend Die. Die who? Die Hatsu, that's who. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. <laughs> What's the matter? See here his name, Nanki Poo, beheaded this morning. Oh, where shall I find another? Oh, where shall I find another? <laughs> Oh, dear, dear, dear. My poor fellow, in your anxiety to carry out my wishes, you have beheaded the heir to the throne of Japan. I beg to offer an unqualified apology. I desire to associate myself with that expression of regret. We really hadn't the least notion. No, of course you hadn't. Come. Come, my good fellow, uh, don't distress yourself. It was no fault of yours. If a man of exalted rank chooses to disguise himself as a second trombone, he must take the consequences. It really distresses me to see you take on so. I've no doubt he thoroughly deserved all he got. <laughs> I, we are infinitely obliged to your majesty. <laughs> much obliged to your majesty. Very much obliged to your majesty. Yeah. Obliged? Not a bit. How could you tell, you know? <laughs> of course we couldn't tell who the gentleman really was. <laughs> it wasn't written on his forehead, you know. <laughs> it might have been on his pocket handkerchief, but Japanese don't use pocket handkerchiefs. <laughs> 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 I uh, forget the punishment for compassing the death of the heir apparent. Punishment. punishment? Yes. Something lingering with boiling oil in it, I fancy. Oh. Something of that sort. I think boiling oil occurs in it, but I'm not sure. I know it's something ha, 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 humorous, <laughs> but lingering uh, with either boiling oil or melted lead. Oh. Uh, come, come, uh, don't fret. I'm not a bit angry. If Your Majesty will accept our assurance. Bless you. Oh. We had no idea. Of course. I knew nothing about it. I wasn't there. <laughs> well, that's the pathetic part of it. The fool of an act says, compassing the death of the heir apparent. There's not a word about a mistake. No. Or not knowing. No. Or having no notion. No. Or not being there. No. There should be, of course. Yes. yes. But there isn't. Oh. That's the slovenly way in which these acts are always drawn. However, cheer up. It'll be all right. I'll have it altered. Oh. Next session. Oh. Now, uh, let's see about your execution. Will after luncheon suit you? Can you wait till then? Oh, oh yes. yes. We, we can, can wait, wait till then. Uh, then we'll make it after luncheon. I don't want any luncheon. I'm really very sorry for you all, but it's an unjust world, and virtue is triumphant only in theatrical performances. See how the fate there gives a lot, for A is happy, B is not. Yet B is worthy, I dare say, of more prosperity than A. Is B more worthy? I should say, he's worth a great deal more than A. Yet A is happy, oh so happy, laughing, ha ha, chopping, ha ha, nectar, puffing, ha ha ha, ever joyous, ever gay. Happy and deserving, eh? Never joyous, never gay. Happy and deserving, eh? If I were fortune, which I'm not, B should enjoy his happy lot. 
And they should die in misery, but in his assuming I am be. But should he perish, that should be, of course, assuming I am be. We should be happy, oh so happy, laughing, ha ha, chopping, ha ha, nick, you're grunting, ha ha ha, but content to die is he, wretched, meritorious be, but content to die is he, wretched, meritorious be. corroborative detail intended to give artistic verisimilitude to an otherwise bold and unconvincing narrative. Oh, corroborative you. detail indeed. Corroborative fiddlesticks. Oh, you're just as bad as he is with your cock and bull stories about his catching your eye and whistling in air. But that's so like you. You must put in your all. Well, how about your big right arm? Yes, and your snicker snee. <laughs> Well, <clears throat> never mind about that now. There's only one thing to be done. Nanky Poo hasn't started yet. He must come back to life at once. Oh, here he comes. Nanky Poo, I've got good news for you. You're reprieved. Oh, but it's too late. I'm a dead man, and I'm off my honeymoon. Oh, nonsense. A terrible thing has just happened. It seems you're the son of the Mikado. Yes, but that happened some years ago. Oh, is this a time for airy furs of large? Your father is here, and with Katisha. My father? Ah! 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 And with Katisha? Yes, he wants you particularly. Well, so does she. Oh, but he's married now. Oh, bless my heart, what's that to do with it? Katisha claims me in marriage, but I can't marry her. I'm married already. Consequently, she will insist on my execution. And if I'm executed, my wife will have to be buried alive. You see how difficult it is? Yes. <laughs> I don't know what's to be done. <laughs> There's one chance for you. If you could persuade Katisha to marry you. <laughs> She would have no further claim on me, and in that case, I could come to life without any fear of being put to death. I? Marry Katisha? I really think it's the only call. Oh, but my good girl, have you seen her? Oh, she's something appalling. Ah, that's only her face. She has a left elbow that people come miles to see. <laughs> I am told that her uh, right heel is much admired Ooh, by connoisseurs. Oh, my good sir, I decline to bid my heart upon any lady's right heel. <laughs> it comes to this. While Katisha remains single, I prefer to be disembodied spirits. When Katisha is married, existence will be as welcome as the flowers in spring. <laughs> Flowers that bloom in the spring, tra la, we promise of merry sunshine. Yes, we merrily dance and we sing, tra la, we wrap in your hope that you bring, tra la, the summer of roses and wine, all the summer of roses and wine. And that's what they mean when they say that a thing is welcome as flowers that bloom in the spring. Tra la, 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 the flowers that bloom in the spring oh, have nothing to do with the gaze. I've got to take under my wing oh, the most unattractable thing oh, with a caricature of a face, with a caricature of a face. And that's what I mean when I say all I say. Oh, but the mother of the flowers that bloom in the spring. Tra la 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 la, la 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 la, oh, mother of flowers of spring. 
my love, but vengeance pursues, they are heating the cauldron. Katisha, behold, a suppliant at your feet, Katisha, mercy. Mercy? Had you mercy on him? See here, you, you have slain my love. He did not love me, but he would have loved me in time. I am an acquired taste, only the, only the educated palate can appreciate me. I was educating his palate when he left me. Well, he's dead, and where shall I find another? It takes years to train a man to love me. 
Am I to go through the whole weary round again and still implore mercy for you who rob me of my prey? I, I mean, my pupil. Just as his education was on the point of completion. Oh, where shall I find another? Here, here. What? Catasha, <laughs> the years I have loved you with a white heart passion that is slowly but surely consuming the very vitals. <laughs> Shrink not from me. <laughs> if there is aught of woman's mercy in your heart, turn not away from a lovesick suppliant whose every fibre thrills at your tiniest touch. Oh, boom. True it is that under a poor mask of disgust, I have endeavoured to conceal a passion whose inner fires are, are broiling the soul within me. <laughs> but the fire will not be smothered. It defies all attempts at extinction and breaking forth all the more eagerly for its long restraint. It declares itself in words that will not be weighed, that cannot be schooled, that, that should not be too severely criticised. Arcadisha, <laughs> I dare not hope for your love, but I will not live without it, <laughs> darling. <laughs> you whose hands still reek of the blood of my betrothed dare to address words of passion to the woman you have so foully wronged. I do, I do. Accept my love. Oh. I perish on the spot. Oh, go to. Who knows so well as I that no one ever yet died of a broken heart? Oh, Katisha, you know not what you say. Listen. <laughs> On a tree by a river, a little tom tit sang willow, tit willow, tit willow. And I said to him, Dicky Bird, why do you sit singing willow, tit willow, tit willow? Is it weakness of intellect, birdie, I cried, or a rather tough worm in your little inside? With a shake of his poor little head, he replied, Oh, willow, tit, willow, tit, willow. He slept at his chest as he sat on that bough, singing willow, tit, willow, tit, willow. And a cold perspiration bespangled his brow. Oh, willow, tit, willow, tit, willow. He sobbed and he sighed, and a gulp he gave. Then he plunged himself into the billowy wave. And a echo arose from the suicide's grave. Willow, tit, willow, tit, willow. Now I'm sure that I'm sure that I'm sure that my name isn't willow, tit, willow, tit, willow. That was blight and affection that made him explain. Oh, willow, tit, willow, tit, willow. If you remain callous and obdurate, I shall perish as he did, and you will know why. Though I probably shall not explain as I die. Oh, willow, tit willow, tit willow.
Yes. Oh, you chap. It's an affecting tale, and quite true. I knew the bird intimately. Did you? He must have been very fond of her. His devotion was something extraordinary. Oh, poor little chap. And, and if I refuse you, will you go and do the same? At once. No, no, you mustn't. Anything but that. Oh, I am a silly little goose. <laughs> You are. And you, and you won't hate me too much, will you, if I'm a little teeny weeny bit bloodthirsty, will you? Hate you? Oh, Katisha, is there not beauty even in bloodthirstiness? My idea exactly. <laughs> When the lion is roaring and the tiger is a lashing of his tail. Yes, I like to see a tiger from the Congo all the and especially when a lashing of his tail. Oh. Volcanoes have a friend that is grim, and earthquakes only terrify the dogs. But to him, scientific, there is nothing that's terrific in the falling of the flight of the toads. Yes. In spite of all my weakness, if I have a little weakness, it's a passion for a flight of thunderbolts. If that is so, sing Delhi Dan, Delhi, it's evident Delhi art is so on. Away we'll go and never be married or tired of it till the day is done. There is beauty in extreme old age. Do you fancy you are elderly enough? The information I'm requesting on a subject interesting is a maiden all the better when she's tough. Oh, I'll just find a million. It's the general opinion that she'll last a good day longer when she's tough. Are you old enough to marry, do you think? Won't you wait until you're 80 in the shade? There's a fascination frantic in a ruin that's romantic. Do you think you are sufficiently decayed? To oh, the matter that you mention, I have given some attention. And I think I am sufficiently decayed. If that is so, sing Delhi down Delhi. It's evident Delhi artists are gone. Away with the family, no tartany, tally today is done. If that is so, sing Delhi down Delhi. It's evident Delhi will taste your one. Away with the family, no tartany, tally today is done. Sing Delhi down Delhi. No tartany, tally today is done. Idiot. <laughs> now then, we've had a capital luncheon and we're quite ready. Have all the painful preparations been made? Your Majesty, all is prepared. Then produce the unfortunate gentleman and his two well-meaning but misguided accomplices. Mercy for Coco, mercy for Pity Singh, mercy even for Pooh Bar. I beg your pardon? I don't think I quite caught that last remark. Mercy even for Pooba! <laughs> Mercy, my husband that was to have been is dead, and I've just married this miserable object. <laughs> You've not been long about it. We were married before the registrar. I am the registrar. <laughs> I see, uh, but my difficulty is that as you have slain the heir apparent... Ah! 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 <laughs> the heir apparent is not slain. Bless my heart, my son. And your daughter in law elected. Traitor! <laughs> <laughs> you have betrayed me! Uh, yes, I, I think you are entitled to a little explanation, but I think he'll give it better whole than in pieces. 
Your Majesty, it is true that I stated that I had killed Nanki Poo. Yes, with most affecting particulars. Your merely corroborative detail intended to give artistic verisimilitude to an otherwise... Oh, well, you refrain from putting in your own. It's like this, Your Majesty. When Your Majesty says, let a thing be done, it's as good as done. Practically, it is done, because Your Majesty's will is law. Your Majesty says, kill a gentleman, and a gentleman is told off to be killed. Consequently, that gentleman is as good as dead. Practically, he is dead. And if he is dead, why not say so? <laughs> I see. Nothing could possibly be more... Subject, I pray you be dumb. Dumb, dumb. Your notions, though many, are not worth a penny. The word for your guidance is mum. You have a very good bargain in me. The threat in cloud has passed away. But so the nights may come too soon. But years and years are hard to do. Then met the throne, the door of the past, with laughing song and merry. Let the throne of joy and once with laughing song and merry dance, with laughing song and merry dance, with laughing song. Oh, this happy baby, dum dum dum. We think you had better sit down, dum dum. You're back. 